Hello everyone, this is Sebastian McMahon from IA Financial Group and I'm back with uh, the first weekly review of uh, December. So we're already almost at the end of the year. So a very eventful week in the economy and the markets. So let's uh, get right into it. OK, so very busy week on the markets. Interest rates lower as the markets are reacting to Omicron. So. 2.25% return on the week for Canadian long bonds. We don't see that often, so that was quite the risk off scare. Uh, when you look at equities, uh, emerging markets were actually higher on the week, but the TSX down, and now the S&P 500 has caught up with the TSX as the later year to date. Uh, Canadian dollar down on the week, uh, in when you have volatility like you have right now, uh, it's not surprising that uh, we have the Canadian dollar pulling back, but we do still think that the fair value of the CAD is somewhere between 85 and 90 cents. So uh, we are very positive uh, in the long run. It's gonna, not going to happen overnight, but let's see in the next year or two, we do uh, see good things for the Canadian dollars, uh, dollar. And one of the main reasons is the labor market. And we did have some data this morning. Uh, the November report was stellar in Canada. We're beating expectations by a factor of four. Expectations were for 37,000 jobs added and we got 153,000 new jobs so that was uh, quite a beat here in the US the jobs recovery is uh, stalling with the uh, part regardez mon chat euh, mon chat parle beaucoup fait que je vais recommencer la partie euh, où est-ce qu'on regarde les acetates parce que lui ici il y a des opinions fortes sur euh, l'économie puis les marchés Allô? Vous êtes en bas? Vous êtes en bas? Oui, vous êtes en OK, on va recommencer. Désolé. Puis si on y a encore, ben, ça sera un fait cocasse. Bon, 5, 4, 3. So, yes, so we had a lot of volatility uh, this week because of the Omicron variant, of course. So interest rates were lower. The TSX, uh, the TMX uh, long index up 2.25% on one week. You don't see that often. So that uh, tells you how strong the risk off was. Uh, on stocks, the TSX was one of the worst performers on the week, uh, caught up by the US for as the overall leader this year, but still above 20%, so still a very good year. Emerging markets had a good week, and uh, the Canadian dollar was a bit under pressure. It's typical when you have a risk off environment, but we are still very optimistic on the CAD. In a year, two years, wouldn't be surprised to see values of 85, 90 cents on the Canadian dollar because the economy. Me. It's very strong here. We have a strong advantage from the labor market. So talking about that, we had the jobs reports in Canada and in the US for November. So stellar in Canada, four times higher than expected. My expectations were for 37,000 jobs uh, in November in Canada, and we got 153. 0.7 thousand, so that's quite a beat. Uh, the service sector is coming back online. We're creating a lot of jobs under service sector. Uh, of course, these this was the sector that was most hurt by COVID. So seeing it coming back strongly online like that, it's very very positive. And now we're running at one percent above the number of jobs that we had prior to COVID. So more than rec recuperated everything. In the US, it's stalling. Um, we were expecting 550,000 jobs in November. We got 210. And it's uh, there is the service sector that was coming back online that just stalled. So as you can see here, the recovery between Canada and the US, well, we do have the advantage and we're growing. Uh, the, the, the gap between the two is growing. So we're even uh, adding to our uh, advance here. So. Canada's on very strong footing. And the reason is not that in the US they're not hiring, they're desperately want to hire, just like in Canada. I mean, the jobs vacancy rate is pretty high in Canada too, uh, but it's the participation rate. And here I have the, the participation rate for the 25 to 54 years old. Just look at the gap between the two. There was already a gap before, but I mean, every country pulled back during COVID, but Canada, we recuperated everything and we're running at an even higher participation rate now than prior to COVID. So the Canadians are either working or actively looking for work. In the US, the participation rate has just uh, covered about, uh, let's say, a bit more than half of uh, the pullback 
from uh, COVID. And uh, so businesses are desperately want, wanting to hire, but uh, there remains some, some fear or some lack of interest, or maybe many people also retired uh, from the, uh, during the COVID uh, episode. So all of these reasons together are giving uh, them picture right now of the jobs recovery uh, in the US. So now if we move to, uh, let's say the top topic of the hour, Omicron variant. So three most important questions here. First one, top left, do we need a new vaccine? Uh, depending on who you listen to, maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, I don't think we get back. Uh, what my understanding is that we're not getting back to square one at all. The vaccines that we have uh, have some efficiency, but probably we'll need booster shots. We'll need new vaccines in 2022. So right now it's still up in the air. We don't know, so it's a risk. Question number two, bottom left, how quickly is this thing going to spread? Uh, in South Africa, it took only a few days for it to become the dominant variant. How quickly will it um, will it spread to uh, the global, to the world? So in Canada, we have cases in Ottawa, in BC. Uh, we have cases in many countries in Europe. We have cases pretty much everywhere around the world. So what the one thing that we learned from Delta variant is that when it starts to spread uh, uh, a variant, you can't really stop it. So uh, let's see uh, how governments react to this is going to be uh, the most important issue. And on the right, you have how severe are the cases right now? I'd say that the uh, anecdotal evidence that we start to hear in the media uh, seems to suggest that it's not too bad. Actually, it could be a good thing for this pandemic if we have something that spreads quickly but is not uh, too, uh, doesn't create uh, too uh, severe cases, too many severe cases that could be good for the hospital system. So we'll see. But right now, it's a lot of uncertainty and markets don't like uncertainty, of course. So one, a few things that we know right now is that, well, Europe uh, it was already moving towards going back to lockdown pre-Omicron, so this should accelerate. So uh, Austria was already in lockdown. Uh, Germany was talking about uh, tightening measures for the unvaccinated. So. We, we are expecting Europe to move to one more step towards uh, lockdowns or other measures, and uh, this is not going to be good for uh, growth prospects of Europe in Q4 or probably Q1 of next year. But the biggest risk might be China's COVID zero policy. Uh, in China, they want to uh, they don't want to have anything to do with uh, COVID. So if you have a case somewhere, then they're going to shut down the region, test everyone. Everyone's going to be locked down at home. If there's a case in uh, an industry, they're going to shut down this industry. Uh, the example here from the Shanghai Disneyland. So there was one tourist that test is positive. They shut the, the 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 park down for quite a few days tested everyone. So if there's a case in the, in the major port, then they're going to probably shut down the port. So we're going to have some more supply chain issues. So this is the point. What happens in Asia has a lot of impact on the availability of goods here, inflation, shipping and all of that. So that might be the biggest macro risk factor right now, how China handles that. So for the financial markets uh, here, sorry, my cat has some uh, strong opinions about uh, about China and COVID. So uh, the, on Wall Street, volatility had been elusive for a good while. And uh, of course, we tend to have a short memory. So probably some uh, retail investors forgot about uh, volatility being, uh, I mean, a feature of the market. So this chart here from the Wall Street Journal, if you look on the right, uh, the stick that you have there, uh, it's, it says that, well, we had five consecutive days of absolute moves of plus 1%. So that means pullback of more than 1% or rebound of more than 1%. So we added it into five. So that was the first time since late 2020 during the election period when we had that. Before that, you had to go to, uh, of course, the big uh, COVID episode of February and March 2020. So it's something that we hadn't seen in a while. So volatility had been elusive. And another way to show it uh, on this chart here, so just a cumulative profile for the median year in black. 
so from 1999 to 2020 and you just add well this line goes up by one every time you have one day with a move of plus or minus one percent so usually in a median year you have about 70 of these moves and uh, the, 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 the the trajectory seems to be pretty smooth so during the year you have these days left and right so they just add up all the way to 70 and the blue line here in 2021 shows that we had a normal year volatility wise early in the year, but during the summer, it pretty much stalled, stalled the calm came back. And uh, now the market was kind of uh, surprised by coming back of some more volatility. Volatility to the upside is always good. Volatility to the downside, it's uh, it's a bit different. So it was a very calm year and then volatility is it's really a feature of the market and it was elusive. So let's not forget that volatility is part of this game. As uh, institutional investors here, we were already more careful, more neutral since the summer months, M I mentioned here many times. And uh, we started to react uh, to the Omicron uh, news last Friday, remove some risk where there was some risk. So neutral doesn't mean that we don't do anything. We just measure our bets and uh, we reduce the amount of risk in the portfolios and we reduced it even further in the last few days. And one thing that pushed us to be you know, a bit more uh, worried or wary about what was going on was the marked divergence between the fear and this is if you look at the stock market the blue line is the VIX index so that's the fear index of the stock market right now I mean you, you see that it's uh, much higher than it was uh, during the summer months but still uh, kind of near the lows of this pandemic the VIX index and the gray line is the same idea but what we see for the bond market so the fear index for the bonds the bond market and it's uh, through the roof and it's at the near the highs of this pandemic so we see that one big market has investors being very worried and the other one not worried that much so we we always think that this will tend to get resolved probably once too optimistic once too pessimistic and it will meet somewhere in the middle so how does that resolve usually that with about the volatility prices uh, reset and then after that it can fade down so that was one of the reasons why we were uh, more uh, conservative than uh, than in prior months right now so we're not uh, our, our portfolios are not really suffering from what's going on with the omicron here so uh, to follow us, ia.ca slash economy, economy and finance 101, material there if it interests you. Twitter and uh, LinkedIn, you can follow me there. And again, I repeat, the PDF of this presentation will be available on LinkedIn. I'll put it in the next few minutes. So when you do see the video, it's going gonna, it's it's gonna to be there already. So connect with me if it's not done already. If it's done, you can just do a search and you'll find the PDF version of this presentation. So thank you everyone and I'll see you again next week.